<coughs> so today we will discuss about the netweaver administrator so this is the main important page for us so to do the all kind of some administration level activities here right so netweaver administrator page so here this is the main page here so if you go to the nwa you need to type the just nwa so anything after the host name port number if you type the nwa so then slash nwa then netweaver administrator page will be opened here so right so here so you can see the so we have the multiple tabs are available here if you don't know particular thing just you can type search here suppose i need some suppose like ssl if you type it the ssl related configurations and everything will be opened here so if you need destinations so suppose like destinations so you just execute destinations the destinations will be created here so it will be there here right that is the very important here so if you don't know just search it here so that that will that page will be opened right so just so that is the main thing here right and also here if you go to the operations there is a stop and start stop and start procedure here so here so what does it mean stop and start means from here from here also we can stop the java system we can restart the java system also stop and start here so but here you need to enter the operating system user id and password you need to execute it here right so here if you want to restart the java if you want to stop the icm from here onwards also you can restart it here right if you want to increase the server count so currently only one server zero is there you want to increase you can increase it here right so java pro java services these all are the currently the services are running here these are the default services which are running here right if you are failed due to some issues or it's a known issues so if you are failed so that's that's we can ignore it here but here applications java applications here each application contains multiple services here so that is a very important applications here right you can see ads ads adobe document and services is the one of the application here for the pdfs the printouts for that purpose we will create here so multiple multiple applications are there here so multiple applications are there here so each application there is a dependency if the application is not starting we need to check the the dependency services also we need to check what is the dependencies so what are the resources so what are the details and all everything we can check it out here right so that is the main important from here also we can stop and we can start the services entire server node single service so we can start it here stop and start here we can start it here sometimes once the application is only down one only one application is down in that case you no need to restart the system just to go to the java application some functionalities are not working then you can filter it out which is failed status or which is stopped status which is failed and which is stopped status you can just check it out here right so failed status just check it out here which is failed here so this is the failed one right so just what you can do here just click on go ahead and restart it here so that will be started here that will be started here but this is exceptional then we can ignore it this one see here this is started mode here now it's not in the failure list here this one right so that's why so from individual applic services also we can start it here so how can i know from which application means here when you are working from here so here in the browser level each service there is a one sap.com there is a url in the url field you see here in the url field so there is a link is opened tc lm itsm maintenance frame so this is the one of the service so this is the one of the one of the sub service here this is one of the sub services here so here we can search it out sometimes here we may get it out here here we may get the service here right so sometimes we may get service here this is not there so here maximum the all the services yes i think it's a maximum few services it will come to the here status here so tc so lm something like that it will come to the here so so services are here available the respective application is available here right so this way we can check the the services status and everything we can check it out here right so this is the 
So if you want to stop individual applications, everything, we can check it out from here. Okay. So that is the main thing here. So here you can see here systems. Systems means this is the one. Databases. So it's a database related XML data archiving. DAS are some related things. So you can ignore it. It's not required for you. So and the Java scheduler. So Java scheduler here. So this Java scheduler is important here. This Java scheduler important here. Sometimes it kind of jobs above level. We will schedule some jobs, right? Here also we have to schedule some jobs. So if required, we can also schedule some jobs here. Here you have to go to the task here. We need to add the task here. We need to add the task here. If you add the task here, maybe so anything, maybe some cleanup job. So, so many things are there here. We want to add anything here, some cleanup job, cleaning the data and everything. So if we want to add the task, just you can. So this is for, see here, uh, each, each, each task, there is a responsibility, cleanup job. This tab will clean the outdated data, outdated data. So right, just click, we can add this task. We can add this task here. This we can also add this task here, right? So we can just go ahead and we can we can add this task so that so we can we can we can we can schedule it here what exactly this task will do so this will delete the old log files and everything so like that there are the few tasks are available so here we can use it here so maximum doing the maybe sometimes we may have to delete the old scrap data and everything here so that time so we have to we have to execute this one that time we have to come and we have to execute this task list we have to Execute it here. We have to execute the this task list here. So any one of the task list we can execute it. We can create the job, provide the timelines, then that will be executed here. That will be executed here. That is the main thing here. Here already completed one. We can see here already completed job logs and everything. We can see. So this is the one of the important thing here, right? So individual that things you can see in the so individual services and stopping NWA we can see here, and also that is a stop and start up the stop and start up the java java serv individual services or java nodes so our applications we can stop it here very important thing here and also java scheduler java job scheduler job scheduler here java scheduler here so here java scheduler is also very important here right java scheduler also very important here to scheduling the any tasks automatically it will do all those things here this is a scheduler here right so uh, <clears throat> and process and tasks here so this one is not required here right only it's not required to remember all those things here only few things which normally we will use in the day-to-day -day activities here so authentication and single sign-on here authentication and a single sign-on single sign-on purpose so we will use the so this one single sign on authentication and single sign on here suppose you want to in the above side in the above side we will use the saml2 configuration right above side we will use the saml2 configuration transaction code for configuring the single sign on right for java side sp nego we have to use it here java side sp nego concept we have to use it in the java side here sp nego so here authentication single sign on we have to go here there we need to add the identity provider service identity provider we have to add it here then so we need to here we have to add it that identity provider so we have to add it here single sign on authentication single sign on brother so ticket based authentication or how it will so we have to enable this one right sp nego or saml2 we have to enable it here for java sp nego is the very important here here we have to so we have to add that one we have to add that one to the here so that the user who are logging to the here they need to enter the user id password it will be authenticated automatically it will be authenticated here using the this concept here right so that is the main that is the one thing here and destinations we know already the creation of the destinations to the your back end above systems or any other third party systems so any systems we can use the destinations concept here destinations right so normally in the above level smgp in java level this is a destinations concept here destinations concept here so certificates and keys certificates and this is a very important here the certificates and keys are the very 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 important keys here certificates and keys here so why because so destinations we know normally last time also we created the destinations 
SLD data supplier, client. So you, how many systems you are integrating? All the systems we can integrate to the here, right? All the systems we can configure it to the here. We can configure it here destinations. So so that is the destinations concept here, right? And also certification, certificates and fees. It is the very, 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 very PSC. Same above level, we have yes trust. Yes, trust SSO2 is the transaction code for the so above based certificates. Above based certificates here. Java, you need to use the URL, right? For Java, you need to use the certificates and keys. You have to use it here. Keys. So here, whatever the systems you are going to trust here. So this all are the common by default. You will get the all those certificates here, right? Suppose so within the system, within the system, so you want to configure the HTTPS well, because currently HTTPS is not configured here. You want to configure the HTTPS certificate here, then you need to update this PSC. You need to update the this PSC. You have to update it here. So and also here the main thing is here the trusted trusted CIs here trusted CIs. Okay, so trusted CS here. So why we have to use it? Java, some some sometimes we may have to integrate the third party banking sites, ah, uh, third party sites, third party sites we will connect it here. Some of the above systems we will connect to the here. So if we want to connect those systems to the here, so if you want to talk to that systems, so that third party system certificate should be is available here. It should be. We have to import the third party system certificate in the, in the trusted CS list. We have to import it here. Then only both the side, the connection will work. Both the side, the connection will work. Otherwise, the connection, it won't work. Why? Because this is the organizational uh, system. That is the some third party banking side system. How the uh, mutual trust will happen. It will not work, right? So that is the reason here you need to use the this one. Here you need to use the so certificates list. You have to import the certificate of that system and that system will connect to the our system here. It will trust while connection is coming to the here. This will trust and why because the certificate is there here. It will trust it here. The same time our system certificate also we have to info, we have to we have to provide to them so that they will update the certificate here. So the public certificates it, it will be the public certificate here. The two types of certificates in the NWA. There are the two types of certificates here one is the public certificate one is the public second one is the private sub private second one is the private certificate public certificate it has there is no password everything here anyone can so import anyone can use the certificate public certificate the naming convention of the certificate is dot cer or dot cert R dot CRT. This is the naming convention of the any certificate naming convention should be this one. So private key, private keys means it is the it is it is having the some private keys are the, having the some passwords. Some passwords we have to generate it. Some passwords we have to we have to use the passwords here in the trusted CS. We have to use the passwords here so that privately they can import maximum. In the banking sites, banking system, if you want to authenticate here, there is a password based authentication, right? It should not be the public. So that is the reason the private key of the banking site we have to import here. Private key of the banking site we have to import it here. Then only it will be trusted. It only the system will be so then only the certificate will be system will be trusted here. We can send the data to the respective systems. We can send the data here, right? So that is the so public keys and private keys. Any key, we have to go to the here respective PSC. You have to. This is called the respective folder. Then just click on the import entry. Then here we can just import the certificate here. So it is the private key. We need to use the PKCS twelve. So then private file. We have to choose it here. File. We have to choose it here. Suppose any file. Then so we have to provide the password for decrypt that one. Then we have to import it here. We have to import that one, right? Let's see here. It won't import. It won't import, but because it's a wrong system, wrong certificate actually. Here that is not important, giving the error here. So correct certificate we have to import it here. 
So that is the private public certificates. We can import it multiple public certificates. We can import it here so that that will be trusted here. X.509 certificate. Just you can choose the certificate. Any one valid certificate. So right. Suppose like we have the this one. So just import the certificate. So that will be imported. That will be imported here. So here that is imported here somewhere. It is imported here. So somewhere that is imported here. You can check here. Yeah, this is the one. This is a certificate just I imported here. All right. So this is a why it is red means it's already the validity end period is over. That is the reason it is over. So why means the certificate is created in the name of my name. So that is the reason. So it is expired. It is expired here. The certificate is expired here. So that is the main thing here. Right. So like this certificates export or import procedure we have to perform from here. If you don't know, just perform the just keys like that. You can just enter it. The keyword, this will open here, right? The next one is the trusted systems here. Trusted systems. It kind of SMT1, SMT2. Above level, you know, suppose if any system wants to talk to within the landscape, so you want to configure the trust. Trust means if you configure the trust, both the systems are in the trust. What will happen? Without asking the user ID and the password, so it will communicate the data within the landscape. It will communicate the data here. So in that case, in that case, we have to enable the trusted systems. Trusted systems, we have to add it here. Trusted systems, we have to create it here. Suppose this is the NJP, okay? NJP system. We want the front end is our ABAP system. ECP is our front end system. Both the systems should be trusted. Trusted means so both the system whenever you you are pulling the data from you logged into the above level for a java system you logged in url then you want you want some data from the your backend system in that case without asking the user id and the password so you, you will get the data you will get the data from the higher how means system is getting trusted here so this certificate we have to export right so trusting how the how we have to add the systems into the trusted means. So here we have to go to the export list base 64. <clears throat> here you need to use the suppose like ECP certificate ECP dot C E R T C R T or C E R T. We have to type it here. Any extension is fine here, right? ECP. So then the certificate is generated here. The certificate is generated here. So this certificate I am just importing into this is a certificate. I am importing into the here Java level, adding the system here. Upload the certificate, upload the certificate here, right? Go and import the certificate here. What is the system ECP and what is the client, unread client, All right? Just click on the OK button, just click on the finish button. So that the system is added to the certificate list here, the trusted one, right? The system is added here, right? And also, <coughs> I need to add this system also into the above level. Why? Because one side trust is happening from above to here, above to Java. Now, Java to above, when you are pulling from the Java, when you are pulling the data from the Java to above, so you, you export both the side, the certificate should be trusted, means imported. Then only the trust will happen. Right, trust will happen means without asking the user ID and password, the trust will happen here. So now you have done it here. You have done that one. So now, like that, we can add the number of organization systems. We can add it to the here so that both within the organization, one system to another system. So the trust will happen. It won't ask the user ID and password while pulling the data, while getting the data from the other systems and everything here. Right. So here certificates we have to import it here. Right. So, and also the same system certificate we have to import in the means this certificate. This certificate also we have to import here. So, here we have to go to that certificates and keys, then trusted. Private key, public key. Private key always it should be private. Private, it should be the private key here. So, this is the local host system here. Right. Local host system here. Local system. Go to the Trusted CAC here, trusted CAC here, whatever the system certificate you have imported, right? So that will be available here. That is available here. That will come to the here. So where it will come? It will come to the here. Yes, right. Here, see the ticket by key store. 
whatever the certificate you imported 100 client the certificate came to the here the certificate came to the here and also same same certificate same certificate logon certificate you have to import into the you have to import into the download that is certificate downloaded now i am going to the above system above system so express sso2 right express sso2 i am going to the express sso2 i am importing from here so same certificate i am importing here right same certificate ticket check so right j and jp certificate right and jp certificate here so yeah. right add to certificate list here so added here njp list so both the side working then you can add to the acl list here access control list here system id njp then so client just you can maintain the triple zero that's it so done save it right save it here now both the systems are trusted now now both the systems are trusted now so which means you can open the you can open the destination you created the certificate exchange also you done it for the authentication purpose so within the between the within the systems suppose user to system user id password authentication right so then system to system certificate based authentication that is a simple words right certificate based was authentication both the side we have exchanged the certificates right both the side we have exchanged the certificates here both the both the same both the sides we have exchanged the certificates here exchanged the certificates here so that is the reason we can see here the ticket by key store and private key we have exported here right now systems can be trusted one by one one by one systems can be trusted here suppose if you are pulling the some data here you have opened the suppose url you have opened here some logical urls www.amazon.com you have opened here then you, you want to book the some order you are booking the order but the order went to the some of the third party banking sites for the payment gateway but that should be trusted right then if it is again asking the user id and password that will be create the problem right why because you are leaving one side to another setting you are leaving right suppose you are booking one order example i am showing here right so you are booking the one order here one payment order you are booking the one watch here okay this watch is fine here just booking the order here right so just click on the buy now by now within the system fine within the system that is fine so but within the system you are good but after you booking it will go to the payment gateway banking site it will go then from this server to how it is going to the banking server without asking the user id and password right then everything is happening which means in the amazon servers list the banking servers has been added here the banking servers added had been in the certificate based authentication you have added here so that is the reason the calls which are coming from amazon to banking those are the trusting it's are the trusted trust certificates here those are the trusting that is the reason you are going to the banking site then the payment gateway there you are doing the payments authentication everything is happening then so automatically it is happening then you will come back to the again same page you will come back to the here same day here also we want you are working you want to do to do the some data you want to pull from here right that required the some above system data also you required so that in that case it will it will not ask any user id password it will directly go and pull the data here right that is the what it will do the certificate based authentication that's why both the systems we will add into the trusted one both the systems we will add into the trusted systems here right certificates trusted systems here ssl ssl means we know uh, suppose you want to configure the ssl ssl connection ssl means now it is the pure http now everything is http it's not secure http https we have to use it here in that case http you have you have to use it here in that case what you have to do you need to so you need to just uh configure the export the file https you have to configure it here https you have to configure the https file and everything you have to configure it here https file you have to configure and you have to do that one so then it will come the ticket we have to import to the here then you can go ahead here you can add the access points here https then what is the port number then so all the entries we have to map it here suppose like port number is like suppose like 50 
4001. Suppose like this is the port number for so HTTPS. Like that you have created here, right? Then here, this is the private key is getting generated here. This is the private key is getting generated here. Just click on the OK button here, right? So this will restart now. This will restart now. This will restart now. Why? Because to set the HTTPS fully, this will restart now, right? So if I restart now, this will be restart. So let me click the restart later here, right? So what will happen now if I restart later? So it's not active now. What will happen here? Now this port is active, HTTPS port. Now HTTPS means purely secure, secure port here. So HTTPS colon slash slash and five instance number. So zero one, five instance number zero one, click on the OK button. That will be open here. So but currently it won't open. Why? Because I have not restarted the Java system. So it won't open. So any HTTPS connection, you have to come to the SSL. Then you have to open the ports and everything. You have to do it here. Sometimes organization is not ready to certificates and everything. In that time, you don't need to touch this one. But this is the very important here. So trusted systems and certificates, normally day-to-day -day we will use this one. Suppose if any third party system you want to integrate here, then the third party certificate you have to import here. Then that we, our certificate we have to import into their system side, you have to import them. Then, then only both the side mutual authentication will happen, then it will work. Right. So that is the so in the certificates and keys concept here. Right. So here this is the one. So ADS, ADS related service. Suppose if you want to. Suppose any ADS, some, some this we require the some of the file we required ADS licensing. So ADS, if you want to use the ADS destinations, we know licenses, licenses here. So Java licensing here. So currently we have the temporary licenses installed here. So if you want to install the any license, permanent license, then you have to install the license from file here. Same way in above level, we will use the above level. How we will use it? In above level, we will use the so yes, license transaction code here. Here we will use the so single sign on. Yes, right. So above here we will use the so this one license tab. We will use it here for applying the license here. Same way here also temporary license and permanent license. Temporary license and three months. Permanent license is the unlimited one. So that is common everywhere. If you go, that is the common common statement. Remaining, we want to use it. Remaining thing, maximum destinations, licenses, certificates, SLD, SLD data supplier. So then Java system properties, Java system properties are very important here. So if we want to change any parameters, so Java system properties are very important here. In the config tool, we will see here. Not only config tool here, you can also come to the here. You can also change the, suppose you want to change the threads. You want to change the some services uh, properties. So same thing here, we can change it here. Some some memory parameters, you want to change it here. You can come to the here, Java, Java system properties here. Then you can change the, all those things, we can change it here. You can change the configurations and everything from here. Suppose you want to change anything, some parameters we may have to change. Above level, how we will go to a RZ10 and RZ11. Same Java level, Java properties, we have to come to the here, we have to change the any prop parameters and everything, we have to change it here, right? That is the Java, Java related. So any any parameters or anything, any settings you want to change it, you can come to the here, you can change it here. System information, trusted systems, we know, system information, we know, like log configurations. So these are the normal that required don't, don't, configuration we got. Connectivity destinations. That is fine. Troubleshooting. Yeah, troubleshooting is the important here. Here you will see the logs, system performance statistics, right? So system performance through statistics, logs. So all the information will be displayed here. So Adobe Plus 12 is no longer supported here. So then, so here, then if the Adobe Plus is supported, it graphical wise, the data will be displayed here. Graphical wise, the data will be displayed here in the systems here. So that is the main thing here. Maybe something we have to enable the macro or something. The plasware is not supported.
locks. So same SM12 locks. Here also there is a lock entry here. Locks, Java locks also. So here locks and traces are very important here. So in the Java level, if you go to the lock viewer, all the locks will be displayed here. All the locks will be displayed here. All the locks here will be displayed here. So I think currently I don't think here it is not it's not displaying anything here. Otherwise, you can go to the voice level default trace file locks. There, we can find out the locks. Most of the locks we can find out from there. Their locks only here, it will be displayed there. The thread dumps, heap dump analysis, we can do it here. Thread dump means the dev underscore server zero, everything. Heap dump means uh, there is a way out of memory files. So, Java also purely, Java nodes are not purely memory minded, memory mentality. It means Java required the minimum 4 GB RAM memory is required here. If something goes wrong Java, it will generate the dump, dump out of memory, dump HPROF files will be generated. That is the main important thing here. So, okay. So these are the, these are the parts will come as a administration things here. Now, normally what we will perform it here in the administration side. So maybe as a Java, as a basis consultant in the Java side, what we will do here, normally stop and start right and also the troubleshooting checking the locks either the OS level right the troubleshooting troubleshooting the java uh, locks and everything stop and start the java systems here so maybe parameter changes if required parameter changes and config tool config tool config tool is the very important here and also so we because java licensing java license here uh like certificates and keys certificates and keys here yeah, certificates and a trusted systems here the trusted systems we have to check it out here trusted systems right so certificates and keys and license config tool trusted systems so then uh <clears throat> what is very important here as a day to day activities so destinations yes destinations right you're right destinations so normally we used to work on the, this one. So Java patching, Java patching, either the some tool or telnet tool, telnet, Java patching, some or telnet tool. So Java locks, locks very important, like a work directory and default, default trace lock files, default trace locks. And uh, what, what, what's there here? And also, Jeko RFC, yeah, Jeko RFC, Jeko RFCs are, Java communication RFCs. Sometimes, sometimes, so same the trusting purpose, Jeco RFCs we may have to create it sometimes here. Jeco RFC here. Jeco RFC here. So this Jeco RFCs is uh, from, from above to Java, Java to here, we have to create the Jeco connections here. Because both, if it's the dual stack systems, previously we have the dual stack systems, mean above plan java we have the dual stack systems here right so dual stack systems here so that time that time java if you want to integrate the java into your above system that time we may have to create the jeco connections jeco connections we have to create it here java jeco connections we have to create it here jeco connections we have to create it here so that the java uh, so it will identify which one is the there is their back end system or front end system it will identify the java system here that's why so we have to create the jeco connections but it's it's not much important but so we may have to check the sometimes we may have to create this jeco connection Adobe Flash Player is not no longer supported. What is Adobe Flash Player? Sometimes.
what you have to do. So you need plus player to use the Java administration in Java. So, okay, it is already deprecated. How does fix this setup no longer supported issue here? Open the check your browser latest version. Enable the flash player in your browser. Install the new version of the Adobe flash player. Okay. Let's download the Adobe flash player, right? Player. This is the one I think. Adobe flash player. And uh, trace locks, default trace locks, work directory, telnet, so Java home page, Java soft component information, component info. So these are the very, very important for Java systems here. So normally day to day, you may have to work on the, uh, these things here, right? If any issues comes, so mainly Java trace locks and work directory. Patching means one or two components, telnet is okay. But more you can use the sum tool. Destinations, integrations, trusted systems, key certificate license that we know. So Java license, once it is expired, system is available only 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, system will be down, right? So once you restart it, again, 30 minutes it is available. Within these 30 minutes only, you have to apply the license. Even though the permanent license is expired, right? That is the one thing for the Java systems, okay? So config tool nodes or threads or if you want to change it otherwise you can go to the java properties java properties so java properties so we have to use the this config tool and everything we can use it java properties here right troubleshooting and uh, uh, java stop and start these are the most frequented most frequently so they may ask you or sometimes you may have to work on the this is these things here these topics mainly these topics here in the java system side right? stop and start Stop and start issues. Way to check the logs. So you need to check the so work directory. In the work directory also, you have to tell like dev underscore specific logs. Sometimes they may ask you dev underscore server zero and std underscore server zero and the dev underscore icm. So these are the very 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 important log files. Very very important log files. Most of the interviews they may ask you what are the log files you may refer it here and also default trace file logs. So default trace files location, they may ask you, right? That location you need to find out here, like USR, SAP, SID, right? J instance number, then J2E, cluster, server zero, the log. So how I remembered all these things? Here, there is a file called the, the default trace. So the default trace files are there. <laughs> Very important here. Any issue, we can find out from here. But you should know the location of the path, <laughs> right? And also the work directory logs. If you if you are familiar with the, these two locations, any issue you can fix it. Otherwise, just grab the letter message. Then I can in the Chrome or in the Google. If you Google it. Definitely, you will get the related error, related clues. You will get it out here. The most of the troubleshooting locks are like this here. So, tell it destination well, because it's all are in the, our control only. Everything we can do it in the day to day activity or monthly activities, we will perform all these things here. Java systems, all so nowadays, all, all, all persons, all the consultants, they will fear Java systems means again URLs and everything. It's a very, a very simple compared to the above. Java is the very, 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 very simple actually, right? Java is the very simple here compared to the above systems. Java systems are the very simple here. So, so you no need to worry. Just log into the systems. You no need to explore more major in the architect level. Uh, why? Because nothing is there in the to discuss in the architect level here. Only few things. If you know these things, you are the perfect in the Java side here. Okay. So just you can just get the familiar with the this side troubleshooting parameter changes config tool so suppose tomorrow they will provide you some parameters to change it then either you can go to the config tool then you are not sure about the config tool go to the java properties 
then where is the next one where to change in java properties go to the java properties then you can change the so properties here right so so one or two comp template you can use it so trusted systems you can add it so same as like smt1 right so destinations sm59 in sap level you can compare that one certificates and keys yes trust right yes trust sso2 right license s license right same above systems s license parameter changes means so in the config tool you can use it or some rj10 here there is no rj10 and 11 here in the java side just restart anything you need to do the restarts here so that is the major thing here troubleshooting locks work directory stop and start you know right see here everything we link to the above systems say so same transactional codes we linked here right these all are the work directory locks so and also compound information system status here we can see the compost system in the above system we have the system status if we go here here also kernel upgrade here also we will do the kernel upgrade of the java system same same way we will do the kernel upgrade here above systems how we are doing same way java systems also we have to do the kernel upgrade here kernel upgrade java systems the only thing is java systems may take some little longer than above systems so that is the one thing here you should know immediately it won't start you need you need to have some patience while after the after starting the java system it will come to here but sometimes it won't start then you need to monitor the java process here of the java process and everything you need to monitor here whether the java systems are starting or not or what is the status here is the running starting app the status we discussed right that status should be here sometimes they may ask you the status also right that is the very important thing here right here threads whatever the threads are there here whatever the users are logging so all the threads will be generated here all the threads are here right everything will be here in the java threads threads will handle it everything here so mainly the http threads something goes wrong here you need to check the threads http threads and everything we have to check it out from here okay so threads is the very important here threads so if you are going with the so the threads are very important here mainly java cache cache means that the temporary uh, area temporary data will be stored here the caches the cache is temporary java cache means java temporary data it will be stored into the systems here gc in the java side also there is a garbage collection garbage collection means it will clean up the unwanted objects every time the gc will happen it will clean up the unwanted objects will be cleaned up here objects before objects after objects before objects after so unwanted data garbage means what we will do in our home in the garbage so unwanted data is there, unwanted wastage. What we will do, we will garbage it, right? Same as like here also, in the system also, if any unwanted data, unwanted objects are there, objects. So then, then that will be cleaned up here. The GC will, this will, this will happen automatically. You no need to worry about that one. What is GC means? Garbage collection. So if any unwanted objects in the short, it will be cleaned up. Okay, heap memory. Yeah. About garbage uh, while starting the system, sometimes we have seen um, that uh, there is a nebular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Always the garbage start. collection system was not started. That time again we need to restart, right? Yeah, cleanly we have to restart it. Cleanly means stop and clean IPC and everything. Then again you have to start the system. Garbage collection is not a problem. Always it's a known issue. Always you see the reason garbage collection will fail. Always garbage collection will fail. It's a normal thing only. It's a it's so a known behavior in the Java system. So you can ignore it. Garbage selection will not create the problem. Maybe it is the issue. What you can do, you need to completely stop, do the clean IPC and everything. Why? Because Java systems, we may face the shared memory issues, shared memory issues, memory issues. Why? Because it will occupy the Java threads and everything occupy the more memory. Why? Because as I told, Java is the memory minded. So that, so if you clean up the memory and everything, start it, it will start it here. Sometimes it won't start due to why, why, why means Java, we are integrated to the ECP system. Suppose example, we have integrated the ECP system above UME. So if UME above not started, you are starting the Java main, Java it won't start. Why? Because you have mapped the Java to ECP, which means if the ECP is up, then only Java starts. So order we have to follow in the organization. So make sure you have to follow the order. So why because UME, user management engine, you map it to the ECP, 
then first start the ECP, then start the NJP, Java system. Then only it will work. Otherwise, it won't work. So like this, you need to so follow the sequence. Maybe in your organization also, most of the Java systems will map to the your above systems only that we can see. So here, web sessions means I have opened with my user. That is the reason you can see the my user here. But if you map the user engine, maybe that we will do maybe Monday. Monday, we will map the UME to user map engine to so above system so that whatever the user is there in the ECP system, same user you can log in with the so browser also. You don't need separate user ID and passwords. Same it will work. But if the Java is down, sorry, above, above is down, Java will not work. That is the one thing here. Okay. That is the main thing here. Heap memory means it's kind of heap memory only. Everything is memory, memory only. So maximum memory is the 4 GB per so each and every server node here objects. So if the more 4 GB is crossed, what will happen? System will go down. System means server node will restart it here. Then you will see here, here server node, the restart here, there is a exit code. Exit code, it will come to the here. Errors, it will come to the one. Exit code come to the here. Like this, we can monitor it here. Here we can see when it was the restarted and everything here. So that is the <clears throat> main thing about the Java system, which you should aware of, which you should be aware of for the Java systems. Okay.